All right, so in this video, I wanna follow up the last batch. The last thing I talked to you guys about was the healing tools. This one, I wanna talk about the sort of original to those, sort of the granddaddy of those tools. One of the first things that Photoshop did to really make it stand out on the scene all those years ago, which was the clone stamp tool, right? So if you hover over the clone stamp where you hit the letter S, you can shortcut to it. And S gets you the clone stamp. Now there's two, there's a pattern stamp in here. We're not gonna talk about that one today. Just the clone stamp. Now, like our healing brush, this is a source-based tool. It is a brush tool, so we can change the size, we can change the hardness, we can change the brush tip shape. We can use our keys, again, right bracket makes it larger, left bracket makes it smaller, all right? And source-based meaning we hold option and we click on a source. Now, the big thing about this tool that I like is it is not a smart tool. It does not try to make my life easier. And by not trying to make my life easier, in my opinion, it makes my life a lot easier. I'm going to hold down option, click on a source. I picked the water, click, and I'm just going to paint around him. And this is, again, the clone stamp. Now, the thing about a clone, a clone is an exact replica. So if I hold option and I define the source of my water, and I do this, once I let go, doesn't change the color, doesn't try to blend, doesn't try to match the destination. It just makes a copy. I can do this over and over and over again, and it's just going to repeat that copy, right? So it makes an exact copy wherever I paint. Now, if I keep going over here, it'll keep going. You can see my cursor down a little bit below. It's that plus sign, that black and white plus. And again, it moves in tandem. If I don't want that to happen, I work on small areas. So for example, Option click, click on these people here, let go, click again, let go, click again. And you can see it's always that distance away from my cursor, but I'm not getting kind of lost with it. So one thing that ends up happening that people end up doing that's a little tricky about this is they'll copy the same thing a few times. So you do have to be careful about that. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So let's hit revert. So again, I'm going to hold option, paint over this guy. And I have the hardness down a little bit, so it's a little blurry. Turn that up just a touch. Zoom in. So could I get rid of this tree? Well, it's not going to do what the other ones did. It's not going to give me that sort of blurry, smoky, cloudy area. But I have to find the right area to source. So I'm going to hold Option, click over here, get my target. And now paint a little bit. And that's a little bluer than I wanted it to be. I could always undo that and click from some of the gray. There you go. Source click again. New source. Paint some gray. I want some blue and gray. I'm going to source click again. So it's a lot of clicking. It's a lot of kind of monotonous work, but that's why it ends up being more convincing, more realistic, because you can do that. You can kind of put that time in. You can control it. Right, so I'm just gonna do this sort of fast. So I'm just gonna source click, again, alt click, and every time you see alt pop up on my screen or, or option, that means that's that symbol right there. That means I'm clicking option again, I'm clicking a new source. So what I wanna do is I'm just gonna zoom in nice and close, and I'm gonna show you how I would work with this typically. I would look for an area for this straight line that I wanted to cover. I'm going to put my cursor right in that part of the building because this edge is pretty consistent down. So I'll click in here, hold option, put my cursor right there, like right so the middle of that target is lined up with that edge. And then I could paint in there. I didn't want that little top piece, so I can try to get rid of him. All right, now I have a little bit more area to work with. And if I zoom out, you might see that a little clearer. Once again, source click here. Now I'm going to move down a bit so I have a little bit more room to kind of play with and paint for a little bit and stop. Source click again back up here. And that gives me that straight line of my building once again. Now it kind of offset my, my floors. I probably could have done a little bit of a closer job with that. Um, something in here, I can look for, again, an area that I can repeat. This little crossbar right here is the same as that for the floors. So what I could do is 
grab this section here, put my cursor right where that crosses, line it up with this one, and say, well, give me that same look. Get rid of that trunk, right? This part of the uh, floor matching here, I'll go to this part there. And you're just looking for things that match and painting in. And that, when I zoom out, becomes a pretty solid cover-up of what was there. So there are a few things I can do. Even with this, I could fix up that color sky a little bit. And this is where those other tools do come in handy. If I wanted to now maybe make the clouds look a little bit more realistic, and one thing that tends to happen, again, I mentioned people repeating the same thing over and over again, is... They'll source an area like this, and then they'll paint a little, and then they'll paint a little, and then they'll paint a little. And what ends up happening is they get this sort of repeated mark over and over and over. It's almost like an echo is the way I've described it. So what I can do is I can then go in with my spot tool, which automatically figures out the areas, and I can just kind of paint a little bit. And it's going to try to figure out what that should look like, and it's going to randomize it a little bit. All right, so that helps that. Now if I zoom out again, I look, everything looks fine. There is a little bit of a whiter area around this top edge. I can also start to combine my selection tools. Grab my polygon lasso. And if I make a selection around an area, something like just a really big kind of selection like this, what that means is if I were to use any of these tools, I'll just use this for example, I can only work inside of this box. So here's a better example with my brush. If I were to paint, when I get outside that selection, I can't paint anymore. So same thing with the clone stamp. I can't get outside of this. So once I have this selection made, I can grab really any of these, but I'll grab source from here and I don't have to worry about going past that line. So I'm just grabbing some darker color sky because I feel like it was a little too light up against that edge. And now that I've gotten the colors to match a little bit more and I got those lighter pixels gone, this is where I can go in with the spot tool. And maybe the spot wouldn't be the best idea in terms of it's gonna pick randomly Seems to be working pretty well for me. The other thing I could have done is the healing brush because I could have chosen specifically where it was. And if I just can kind of go over this area a few times, because again, it's clouds. I'm not worried about the sort of texture of it or anything like that. Now see there, I missed a couple dark pixels. So it got a little odd. But now, if I zoom out, it should kind of appear like there was never really any tree there to begin with. This area needs a little cleaning up, but you guys get the general idea, right? So if I go back to my other file, something like this, again, the others, the other tools worked to an extent. If I really wanted control over it though, I could decide how I want each piece to kind of uh, interact. So right at the edge of the water and the sand, whoops. Didn't switch tools yet, my mistake. So there you go, a little smaller than that. Hold option, go right to the edge of the water and the sand. And then again, edge of the water and the sand. I'm just gonna paint him away. And now the sand comes up a little too high there. So I'll just look for a smaller area and again go on that edge kind of clean that up a little bit all right and if I do see any sort of repeated area this could kind of be seen as a little odd right in there this is again where something like this would come these tools would come in and see if that helps Kind of randomized now see that got a really really crisp clear detailed part which doesn't look right so this one i have to be a little careful of with these smart tools so maybe that's not the right way for this one maybe i will just um use my colon stamp in that case 
So you can just sort of randomize some things a little bit. Over here, And I will tell you that I personally feel that I will always get better re results from this tool than any of the smart tools. It, you might feel like it's more time consuming. You might feel like it's, it's not as efficient. But for me, I will personally say I always think I will get better results um, using this, even though it, it takes a bit longer. All right, so those people are gone. And now it's just these guys left. Option in here. And part of me is thinking about the sand. And then I'll think about the water area in a minute. I'm going to grab some of the sand from here, see if that works in terms of angle. Looks like it does. Go back, hold Alt, grab it again. Just get that seam. And now I can grab some of the white water from here, drag over, and just very slowly kind of chip away at what they, yeah, the area that they were in. And again, if I don't like any of the repeated areas in that spot I could go in with this and just tweak a little bit here or there by the way this is a large file so it's taking a little bit to render on my screen if you're having an issue with it rendering as well you can go to image image size and just scale down this the height and width of this file we don't we're not printing this we don't need it at that full resolution so even if you just just did something like 1600 resolution uh, width by a thousand. You're still going to get that quality and it's going to be a little quicker now. So you can feel free to do that. All right. And this gets all those little things out of there. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't really see any issue here. I don't see any um, what we would consider artifacts or remnants of what was there. Nothing that really gives us away that it's been touched up. All right. So this is a good way to get used to this tool. Um, I'll give you guys a couple challenges in the next few videos so that you can practice this. But this is a good starting point for what you would use your clone stamp for and how you can kind of use the other ones to play into it. All right.